can be tempting to think that all priests and religious come from a certain kind of family. Now, while studies do show certain characteristics that are prevalent in those families, we'd be fools to presume that someone's not called just because he or she doesn't fit in a certain box. I'm going to examine three family realities that many young men and women face who are discerning a call to the priesthood or the religious life. This video is part three. Can a priest be called from a non-practicing family? Make sure you also check out my first and second videos about priests called from broken families and those called from small families. So could God call someone to the priesthood from a family that is lukewarm in the faith? Could he call someone to the priesthood from a family that stopped going to Mass? From a family that's joined some non-Catholic church? Well, the answer is, of course he could. In fact, he is calling them right now. You know, in a perfect world, everyone would live out all five parts of Bishop Brungart's kingdom living. Daily prayer, weekly mass, monthly confession, study of the Bible and catechism, and witness of the good news. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And for some, regular participation in the Catholic faith has become nothing more than a memory. But what happens when our straying soul intersects with God's unique plan for our lives? Well, just ask St. Paul. He says in his letter to the Galatians, chapter 1, You heard of my former way of life, how I went against the church. But God, who from my mother's womb had set me apart and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me. Well, in the case of a non-practicing family, I see two different groups of men. There are those thinking about the priesthood while their family is outside the church. And there are those who may have a call, but are not even practicing the faith themselves. Well, thinking about the first group, it seems like an incredible irony for a man to hear a call to the priesthood when his own family has chosen to not even come to Mass anymore. But it's not unheard of or even uncommon. In many of those cases, he too was once away, but through a girlfriend or a co-worker or a college Newman Center, he found his way back. And now he's praying for his family to have a similar conversion. Well, he may worry that going to the seminary will just make things worse. After all, his family is already far enough away from the church. To have their brother or their son studying for the priesthood might come across as self-righteous or hypocritical. And let's be honest, his fear might be proven true, at least at first. Yet God's grace is amazing. I've personally seen him use a man's seminary or ordination or priesthood as a first step toward healing his family's heart. And either way, we can't let the opinion of others prevent us from being the person that God made us to be. Well, the second group includes those men who are still distant from the church themselves. I mean, how can I say to a guy, you should consider the priesthood, and you should consider going to Mass on Sunday? Actually, I don't say that, because it's not fair to confuse him with something that at the moment is outside of his world. But it's a great sadness for me when I encounter someone who, as a youth, was so connected to the church, and even now exhibits great qualities of service, humility, and generosity, 
but lacks that fundamental relationship with Jesus Christ through his church. Well, obviously, the goal is to help a man move from the second group to the first group. To move from being a man away from the church and the sacraments to being a man who used to be away from the church and the sacraments. Never mind the priesthood for now. Let's focus on the fact that I need a savior, that Jesus died and rose for me, and that he gave us the Catholic Church to help me follow where he has gone. If priests only came from perfect families, then the Last Supper would have been a really lonely meal. Instead, Jesus chooses those men that he wants and then gives them the grace, if they're open, to overcome whatever obstacles that they or others may have placed in their path. 